Hey guys, have you ever wondered how breweries get their beer into kegs so that you guys can go and order your pints at the pub? If you've ever wondered, come and join us because we're going to show you how they do it. Hey guys, welcome back to Flying Wombat TV, the channel all about making fun and creative styles of beer with biotechnology and science involved. And today, we're going to be kegging. So we're going to do a tank to tap video and we're going to show you how to get the beer from the tank into the keg, into your glass. So we're going to take you through the whole process with this particular beer here that we've had fermenting for a couple weeks. This is the Australian Pale Ale that we made with you uh, a little while ago and it's ready to drink. So let's get into it. Okay, quick breakdown on the equipment we're gonna be using to transfer our beer into the kegs. You're gonna need a couple of uh, one and a half inch TC triclover uh, clamps, um, a couple of seals to match those clamps. So again, one and a half inch beaded silicon seals. We're also gonna use a, um, a lightly meshed one just to catch any big debris. Uh, we're also gonna be using an inline bouncer filter. So this is the pro version. You don't really need one this big, but we have it, so we're gonna use it. And it's basically just a really fine mesh to uh, filter out any of the hot debris before it goes into the keg. We're also going to need a measuring cylinder and a hydrometer. That's just to take your final gravity reading. We've already done it, but we may as well do another one anyway. Uh, a beer line to actually transfer the beer into the keg, as well as a, um, you know, a beer connector to attach to the uh, beer inline post. A pressure relief valve that we can regulate the pressure that it's coming out of because this is already a carbonated beer so we don't want to lose any CO2 while it goes into the keg. We want to carbon, we want to keg it under pressure. And lastly, a uh, one and a half inch TC connected quarter inch um, barbed um, thing. <laughs> uh, what is it called? Barb, a, uh, <laughs> I'll put it, I'll edit it in. <laughs> Pose Barb. Pose Link barb below. <laughs> Do you want to retake that? <laughs> oh, that was great. Uh, we've got one other piece of equipment, a scale, just so that we know how much beer is actually going into each of these kegs and, you know, two kegs. All right, let's keg some beer. All right, so once you've lined up all the equipment that you need to use to transfer your beer from the tank or the bucket or whatever into your keg, uh, make sure you give it all a good clean. So you've gone through all this work in the last couple of weeks to actually make your beer that you're finally ready to drink. You don't want to ruin it at the finish line by you know, using something that wasn't sanitized, infecting your beer and just skunking it. So um, just make sure you give everything a good clean before you actually use it. You can use something like Stella Sand like we do, and you basically just make a little bit of a bath pour all your equipment, give it a good dunk, make sure that it all touches the sanitizing liquid uh, before you actually go and use it to transfer your beer. Can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> Scrub a dub dub. <laughs> I need a um I need a, a little rubber ducky. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll insert that in first. <laughs> Bit messy on the B roll, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a snake. It won't it won't tame. All right, there we go. There we go. My helmet. <laughs> my helmet. My helmet. My snake. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, another reason that uh, we use Stella Sand is because it's a non-rinsing agent. So you don't need to uh, you know pat it dry or wash it down after you use it. You basically just let those bubbles you know drip off, and you can use the equipment straight away. So. That's, that's pretty useful if you don't want to hang around waiting ages for your stuff to drip dry and um, you know, just wasting time. So use Stella Sand, it's just effective, it works, and it's pretty hassle-free. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do here is clear out the, um, the what is it, the racking arm of this, uh, of this beer. So mm. a bunch of sediment and yeast and stuff is gonna get caught in the racking arm, which kind of sits inside like, a, uh, like an elbow angle. So inside here, there's a little, um, stainless steel pipe that goes up and then down into the tank to make sure that you can actually get the beer out of the right spot. So that little piping basically gets clogged up with a bunch of yeast and stuff and you don't really want to put that into your keg. So all we're doing here is we're going to do a little bit of a quick dump just to clear out that line before we actually start transferring into kegs. So normally about like a schooner's worth of beer. So if you're watching from America, I don't know if you guys use schooners or not. 300, 400 mils of beer, basically. Just empty it out a little bit. It feels like a little bit of a waste, but it does give you a better, better quality beer in the keg. 
All right, so now we're gonna connect our inline filter to the actual tank. So, ooh, gotta connect it the wrong way. So connecting it that way, whack on the, uh, the TC um, uh, clamp, close it up, that's pretty much it. Then we're gonna connect the beer line to the other side of this filter, so that the beer that we're getting out of it, it's not gonna be crystal clear, that's not the goal here. We're not making filtered beer, we're just uh, filtering out debris, residue, so any little bits of you know hops and stuff that are still inside this tank. We don't want that going inside the beer because it will give it an astringent taste, it'll increase the bitterness, and, um, and it can clog up the beer line as well when it's actually coming out of your taps. So, not completely essential to use one of these, but if you have one, use it. Uh, so next we're just connecting our hose barb, quarter inch hose barb uh, TC connector into our beer line. So I should have done this wearing gloves, but you know what? I'm going to be probably like the only person drinking this beer, so <laughs> I don't care. Give it a little, little dunk in the sanitizer. All right. And now we want to connect this to our inline filter. So let's connect that there. All right. Now that's connected. This is going to connect to the keg. So grab the first keg, put it up here. Now this is already uh, holding pressure. So all of these kegs have already been sanitized uh, with, again, with stellar sand. They've been you know, rinsed out, then washed with stellar sand, and then they've been brought up to pressure. Now the reason that I've already filled these up with pressure is because this beer is already carbonated. So we don't want to put that carbonated beer into a tank with zero pressure because then it's just going to lose a whole bunch of bubbles basically. So this is already basically matching the pressure of what's inside the tank. So, and that's why we need that pressure release valve to slowly let pressure out of this as this transfers into this. It'll make sense as we kind of go along. We'll connect that to this now. There we go. All right. Last thing is the uh, pressure release valve. So to give you guys an idea of what this is, basically, you can get these from Kegland. Again, we'll put the link down below. So what this is, is this connects to the gas line. This is obviously just a pressure gauge. So it tells you how much pressure is inside this thing at a time. And then this just lets you regulate how much pressure you're releasing. So this is gonna be flipped this way. We're gonna set this to 15, 14, 15 PSI. That's what we're gonna transfer out. That's what our beer is carbonated to. And then this is just a little um, automatic stop. So basically as the tank gets full and beer starts coming up through this, it's gonna push this little uh, foam ball up to the top, we'll block the hole, and then we're not gonna get a whole big spill over if I lose concentration and I'm not stopping the transfer. We connect this to our keg. Alrighty. Now that is good to go. Uh, from here, all we need to do is turn on the pressure going into this tank so that we don't want to just transfer with gravity here because we're working with already carbonated beer. So we have a CO2 tank over here with its own regulator connected via a gas line into our fermenter. So we're going to turn on the pressure into this at about 16 PSI. We're going to set this to about 14, 15 PSI. And due to the pressure difference, all the beer is going to come out of the beer line and into the keg. So let's turn on our scales. Let that zero out. Uh, let's turn on the gas over here. Alrighty, gas is on, scales are on, everything's set up. We can now open up the valve and start transferring beer. All right guys, everything's now set up and good to go. We've got our beer line connected to the keg, all the way back connected to the fermenter tank. That fermenter tank is under pressure from our CO2 tank. So now this is set to about 16 PSI. This is set at 14, 15 PSI. So because of that pressure difference, once we open up this butterfly valve here, all of that beer is gonna come rushing out into the keg. And because we're doing this already under pressure, this beer is gonna be good to go and ready to drink once it's in the case. You know, come in as I open up the valve. Yeah. All right. I'll get this thing. And we are open. All right. And away we go. Like the uh, the running of the bulls in, um, in Spain, but with beer. So I guess it's nothing like the running of the bulls at all. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> bulls and beer, man. Bulls and beer. <laughs> bulls and beer or bulls and beer? I don't know. A bit of both. Keep <laughs> your manscape, mate. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, just to give you guys a quick example, come a bit closer, just to give you guys a quick example of how this thing actually works. Right now, we've let the pressure go way, way up. So if we open up this valve here, that hissing sound you're hearing, that's us releasing carbon dioxide. So basically the way you can use this thing is keep releasing gas until you get to the pressure that you're looking for and then just leave it there and it'll keep releasing that gas at a steady pace and it'll, it'll hold at that pressure. So we're about, about there is where we want it. <laughs> All right guys, first keg is down onto the second keg. Uh, so we'll be done with this soon and then you can meet us over in the tap room for a drink. Alrighty guys, the keg is full. Oh, let's go drink. <laughs> it's tapping time. <laughs> All right, so we'll do a whole uh, another video some other time on uh, how we built this bar, how you can set up a bar like this, how to, you know, start kegging beers for the first time, how to sit, connect them up to taps, all that kind of jazz. For now, we're just going to show you that we're putting the keg into the bar. So. Lift with great struggle, like so. Get it in. Whoops. Alrighty. Slide into place with much effort. All right, and then we just need to connect up the carbon dioxide and the actual uh, beer line. So, beer line over here. Let's connect that up. Oh, let's release a bit of. Bit of pressure first, it's probably a bit shaken up. All right, we'll connect the beer line. Now we'll connect the CO2 line. This is the keg that we just dropped in here. This is the pale ale. So all we had to do was slide the keg into place and now we've connected the gas line into the gas post, the beer line into the beer post. So this is now under pressure, it's ready for serving and we've got beer on tap. Alrighty, so now we finally got our pale tail. <laughs> <laughs> pale tail. All right, okay, ready? Come on, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Alrighty, so now we finally got our pale ale on tap and ready to drink. So you followed us go from uh, tank to keg, now into the bar and on tap. So let's pull a pint and uh, see how she looks. Oh, beautiful, look at that golden color. And this is absolutely why I love uh kegging under carbonation so that you can pretty much just drink this thing as soon as it's tapped and you don't need to wait for days and days for it to carbonate so if you want us to do a video on that in future let us know as well um could have done a bit more head there but oh well so look that's it guys thanks for following us and uh, if you do have any questions at all please drop us a comment below we'll be happy to help out and if there's any other topics or more technical videos you want to see in future uh just again let us know because we want to make videos that you guys want to watch so well, cheers. Don't forget to like and subscribe and happy brewing. Oh, my fly's open. Mate! <laughs> How long has that been open for? <laughs> hey, that